welcome to episode four. On this episode, we will be covering the control panel, which I um, made for my attraction. And I will talk about all the different components and how I built it. So uh, first off, I want to say uh, welcome back. If you've been watching the whole series the whole time, I really appreciate that. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. So, uh, oh, one thing here. Um, it's nice to have uh, family and friends that know how to sew. Uh, they made this little cover for me. So here we are. So here's the panel. So basically all I did was um, on the top here I got a Marshall uh, monitor which has four different small monitors in it for my four cameras because I, I have four rooms and each room has its own camera. Over here we have the um, a little thing I just threw on just because it's got the inside temperature of the components and the time date and everything so it looks kind of official. One of those little stupid geeky things I put on there. <clears> then <throat> over here we have the Trackomatic, which is a little um, Uno 3 run um, little computer that if you hook up uh, little switches along the track, every time it tags a switch, it'll show starting from um, the station going around the whole attraction. And this is my actual map of my um, my track design. So um, get the power for that one right here. Right now it's not it's not displaying anything because um, I don't have any switches hooked up. So unless I have any switches hooked up, it's not gonna start showing everything. But down here, I have um, car dispatch for cars number one and two. Um, this is actually set up for three, but um, for for what we're running, we only had enough to run um, two cars. We didn't have enough room on our track. So basically, it's on and off. On, off. And then if I had a third vehicle, um, I do have another remote wired up to this, um, in a way. It'd be on and off on this well as this one. So then um, I have a USB set up because I actually have a little light, so at night time, um, you can see um, what's going on. So I have keys here. We have the main power right here. We have keys. This one actually turns it on. There's no way to take the key out once it's on. So I'll show you here. I'll put it in the right way. And here we go. Powered up. The other thing that I actually installed on this, um, <clears throat> since I have running um, remote controls, on off switches, RF switches, for the ride vehicles, which are these right here. Um, for this, for all, for this, this setup right here, I actually have this as the um, the spiel, the safety speech. So that's what I kind of have hooked up to a pop controller when I use it on my ride. But I hooked up an override right here, which actually um, lights up this light to tell me that it's engaged. So once this is engaged, it actually cuts the power to the remote controls. So that way, if there's a problem, you can actually turn the override on, take the key with you and go help whoever's having a problem. <clears throat> or, you know, if there's a car stuck or someone was goofing off or something, they need to, you stop the ride vehicle and turn the override on and go help them out or figure out what's going on. Um, as far as these right here, these are actually just light up arcade buttons you can buy, like really cheap online. So the, I just got the light up ones because I thought they looked fancier. And this whole um, system I have here set up, I aptly named it the Go Go Ride System because I made my um, ride vehicles out of GoGo -Go mobility scooters. So taking a closer look at the front here, as you see down, um, my main pillar is actually a, a white plastic cover that you put on a 4x4 if you're making like a rail or fencing. And I also have the base, the base trim down here around it. Um, a friend of mine gave me this foot pedal right here which makes it look like an official uh, dark ride or carnival attraction. And I actually had it uh, rigged up I didn't have it actually um, doing anything for the attraction at the time. I could actually use it as a secondary override or have it so in order to dispatch, you gotta hold the pedal down and then hit dispatch. So I can actually do it that way if you wanted to. Um, what I did is I had a prop set up with a prop controller that at random I just had the person, whoever's running it, step on it at random and set off the prop. So that's what we did there. But yeah, so the override, once again, is a key. And you see the override is off, so now there's actually power. If I actually had my ride vehicles on, this would actually start and stop the ride vehicle. So, got car one, car two. Then come around this way. As you can see in the back here, these are the actual remotes that came with my um, the remote switches that are actually installed in the ride vehicles. So I got these, these are actually, um, they run about 300 feet for their um, range. So I got the two of those, and I also have this one, which is one of my original ones, right here, tucked up in here, and that's the third riding vehicle. 
And then, so you can see now the track, I actually put a puck light right here. And these are just my output videos for the uh, all the cameras. And I just put a little switch in here. This is actually just a metal box that a buddy of mine gave me. That um, he said, hey, would you like this box for something? I said, sure. So I just got a little piece of plywood and I uh, put it together. So I'll open it up here and show you the guts, which look very complicated, but they're actually not as hard as, or as bad as they look. As you can see here, I have my power supplies. Um, one of these is for the, the um, monitors. The second one is 12 volts, which goes to this bus right here, which I have my positive, uh, my positive and negative. And you know, hooks up to the fan, and I rigged it all up in here. I'll go into a plug, go into the back. So over here, this is the Uno 3 Arduino board. That's what runs the tracking. And here's where you put all six of the switches, the, the, the two wires each. So if you actually um, connect something to each of those, it'll actually light up that corresponding light. And then um, as far as my buttons are concerned, all they are is just an arcade button, like I said. Here's a blue one here, micro switch. As you can see, it, just, it hits a little switch there. And Basically, the outside two wires are the LED, and then the ones that are on the switch here, the, the red and black, that's going to be your uh, contact, so that'll close the circuit. So, I have a video here um, that'll show how I uh, was testing the, re uh, the vehicles and everything out. Hey there, everybody. Um, this is going to be my first actual um, test of the control panel with remote integrated into it with this car number two here so um right now i have control override is on so right now there should be no power see got no power so we engage it All right, it turns off that means i'm good to go dispatch car number two and look at there and i'll stop it back where i started here see what happens Stop. Hey, hey, get a long shot here. And stop. Start. And stop. Beautiful. Here we go. First successful test of the control panel integrated into the remote switch. there I'm showing off my uh, control system which will track the cars as they go around the um, track. Um, I'm running a Arduino Uno 3 board right here onto this board and then um, when I actually have my attraction for Halloween it will actually track around the whole perimeter here but um, just for the convention's sake I am just using the three triangular ones here. So over here I have three limit switches each corresponding to which position it is on the track. So we'll start off with the first one here. As it dispatches, it'll go around the back side, which will turn that light on. And then as it tracks to the other side of the ride, it'll activate this one, which turns that light on. So it tells me it's in the back side of the attraction. And then when it returns to the station, it will trigger this one right here, showing that it is back in the station. And that's pretty much it. So here's a video of our test subject going around for the first time test, testing at the Trackomatic. As you can see, the cover was different um, for my Trackomatic. I had one set up for the convention, which only had uh, three switches, which because I had a little oval track, a little small track, so it didn't really matter too much. So I just wanted to show how it worked, how the system worked, and it worked pretty well for the first, I don't know, three quarters of the day. But I found out I found I bought some bad switches. I bought some cheap ones. So if you're gonna do something like that. Um, with the limit switches, make sure you get some nice, um, some nice ones. Now to understand how I made the buttons on the control panel work, what I did is I took the remote here, I took, I opened it up, and I actually soldered wires onto the onto the sides of the connectors that connected. So I have your start and you have your stop. So I just ran wires from this into my control panel up to the buttons. That's all I had to do. Now these remote controls run on a 12 volt battery. So for my override, what I did is I, I soldered wires under this as well, get your plus and your minus. And um, I have a power supply that has a 12 volts like I showed you. And so what I did is I just put a switch in between 
the um, power supply and the um, the power for this. So when you turn the override on, it actually disconnects one of the sides of the batteries, and that's why the remote control will not work. So the other nice thing is that um, even though you know you solder wires onto this, you could actually still use the switches. So if I needed to in an emergency, let's say the switch failed on the top, I can reach over and I can actually still hit the stop button on the remote control and it'll still work. So um, the only other thing I did is I just um, I notched out the back. I just made a little notch in it so the wires can come out to accommodate the wires. And um, that's how I wired it up. So um, as far as the finish is concerned, um, I just took some rust color and a few other colors and I went around the whole thing, gave it a little uh, once over. That's why I kind of that's how I gave it the kind of the worn out rusty kind of look. So um, as well as the panel and everything, I think I used like some dust color and some rust and then uh, a little bit of like a silver. So that's how I aged it and made it look like an old control panel that's been around for a long time. So um, that's pretty much it. So I want to thank you for joining me. Um, you know, making your own attraction. Um, you don't need to make something as elaborate of all as all this. Um, this is just what I came up with. Um, I love the Disney parks, so you know. I emulated what they did. So this is kind of how they set theirs up. They have their controls right here. They have their tracking over here and they have their screens here. So it's kind of what gave me the inspiration to do this. So um, I want to thank you again for joining me. Um, the next episode will be episode five. That'll be covering everything else. Uh, sound, lighting, props. Uh, we'll be going over some of the stuff I used and um, why I used it and uh, some great ideas for maybe your attraction. So um, this is Cobalt Hunter saying, Stay spooky.